Good morning, everybody. It is time for the daily review. Let's see what's going on in Arena today. All right, so we're going to cash this in. All right, well, attack with 30 creatures shouldn't be too, too hard. Uh, I completed the entire mastery tree. All right, like, I basically left, maxed out my levels. All right, so, eh, it is what it is. So let's go to the tree and cash in some of these, some of these, uh, Mastery orbs, I guess. All right, so yay, Chandra's incinerator. All right, and last one is Chandra, Heart of Fire. It'd be nice if you actually got the card, but all right. So then we're gonna go and check out the store. All right. Oh, it looks like a cheap pack, and Amon Cat pack is gonna be okay because you can play it in historic. So let's see, 700 gold for a pack. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. All right, the rest are just card styles. And yeah, you know what? Like, these are decent cards, but, uh, you know, the, the problem is you're not getting the cards. You're just getting the style of the card. So, you know, screw that. I'm not getting that at all. All right, let's go open up that pack. All right, so I'm on Ket. Let's see. I don't even know what, what I'd want from this set. Uh, Hour of Devastation. Okay, all creatures lose indestructible to end of turn. Hour of Des Devastation deals 5 damage to each creature and each non bolus planeswalker. Alright, uh, fair enough. And this will probably go well in a cat's deck. Alright, that is it. Okay, so that is it for the day. I just wanted to mention that in this standard 2021 Artisan form format here, this Artisan Blue White Auras deck is amazing. It is so good. Like, I haven't lost a single game with it yet, right? So, like, when you look at it, um, let's go through it again. Like, it's just so good. I don't, like, yeah. Like, I don't even know what to say. I played probably at least 20, 25 games in, uh, or 20 to 25 matches with this, and I haven't lost a single one, right? And like I said, um, I'm, I'm not saying it's undefeatable, because you, you, can, you can lose with any deck, but it's just so strong. Right, um, especially because of the evasion. Beloved Princess was such a great include, and if you haven't seen the deck tech on this, well, I guess I'll go over it again. But we got Alcyon of Life's Bounty. You know, it's a one uh, one mana one one with life link. You got Beloved Princess, so another one mana one one with life link, but also uh, can be uh, it can't be blocked by creatures with power three or greater. That evasion has made this so deadly because once you start in like a lot of times people are playing in the current meta they're playing like um, uh, the counters with uh, it, the, with the adventures like the green white adventures deck um, and they're just stacking counters on things and because you have such a big life linker that is essentially unblockable right then you can just swing in every single time like you know it's not hard to get beloved princess to be like a 10 10. You know, and then you're just swinging in, and they can just swing back, and it doesn't actually matter because you don't need, even need to block. You just gain back all the life, anyways, right? And so, um, yeah, Beloved Princess is just so good, right? Fairy Guide Mother also really, really strong. You know, but partially because you can create a one-one flyer with. So there's the evasion part, but then you can also, if you have the extra mana, give your creature a plus two plus one, and it gains flying. And that actually works out well, and has worked out well for me with Staggering Insight. Because sometimes your opponent does have a blocker, right? And what you want to do is try and hit with Staggering in Insight all the time. So Staggering Insight, in case you don't know, is uh, plus one plus one, has lifelink. And then, so your, your creature gets plus one plus one and lifelink. And then whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. So so you just start drawing cards like crazy with this and it's just you know so good you know and then after that um you know you got the uh karma just blessing for protection all that glitters which just is a total powerhouse glass casket is a form of removal same thing with pacifism all right starlit mantle is um is again uh, this is a good one for protection because you can flash it in and it also synergizes well with all that glitters right so like you know giving yourself uh hex proof you know, the only time that i've ever had a problem is um when our, my opponent was playing mono white and they tried to use a uh, what's that called? I forget what it is. It's kind of like a detention sphere or whatever. I know it's not detention sphere, but you know that three mana uh, white um, enchantment that can just like take something off the field, right? Um, basically, if you try and give your creature protection from white, then all of its enchantments will fall off of it. So that in that case, then you're kind of screwed. So what you need to do is actually use a starlit mantle, 
right? And Starlit Mantle gives it Hexproof, and then it basically can't be targeted, right? So that's actually pretty good. Uh, so we got Staggering Insight. Heliod's Pilgrim has worked out pretty well late game. I agree that it should be a two of. Same thing with Arcanist Owl, right? Like these ones, so maybe even a one of if you don't really want them. Um, but sometimes, you know, when you really need that card, like especially the games that kind of get drawn out, right? This these cards can actually get you the card like that, that you need to kind of turn the game around, right? So I mean, overall, the land ratio is very strong. Like I think it's the right number of lands. Um, I the, probably the toughest game I played was against um, a black white, so an Orzov um, sacrifice deck. And what they would do is they would, I forget what it is, what creature it is, but um, they'd have a creature that they could sacrifice to bring back, um, to bring, to draw a card. And then if they gain three life that turn, they'd be able to bring it back, which is actually pretty ingenious. And they had Bastion of Remembrance out and also Revenge of Ravens. So they were just constantly bringing it back and then drawing cards. And then uh, basically just trying to tax me every time I, I had life. But the problem is when you've got like a 30-30 or a 40-40 or lifelinker that's basically unblockable, you know, like, it doesn't matter if you're taxing someone's life, right? Because I can just gain back, like, 40 life every single turn. They hit me with two Great Merchant of Asphodels. Uh, they were pinging me with Con Sir Conrad the Grim. They were hitting me with uh, Bastion of Remembrance, like, every turn. It Like, they were probably doing about, like you know i don't know 15 to 20 damage per turn but i was gaining back like 40 life every time right and so and the the way they were doing it was actually it was kind of funny is that they were actually um s like sacrificing that creature to draw a card and then bringing it back uh, but in order to run that trigger they had to constantly draw cards right and what they eventually did is they got to the point where they were about to mill themselves out Right, it came down. I was actually drawing a lot of cards because I had three staggering insights on an Arcanist Owl, and my uh, but my opponent had drawn so many cards prior to that that they uh, they only had like 10 cards left in their library and I had like you know 25 cards or 20 cards or something like that and so eventually I knew that if they kept recycling it they would just run out of cards and eventually they just swung with everything I think they just realized they couldn't win and gave up so I mean this deck is so so good right like when I put it together I wasn't thinking that it would be so strong but I seriously haven't lost with it and it's like one like 20 to 25 matches in a row and that's even sometimes I had to mulligan to five um mulligan to six or mulligan to five it's still strong you know especially if you mulligan and you get uh, staggering insight right um you know sometimes it can be a little scary though you know, because you have sometimes, like, especially if you mulligan to six or five, and then, you know, you got your turn one, beloved princess, two, turn two, staggering insight, but you're basically, you know, have no protection for a while until you can get some of your mana online. And then, you know, staggering insight really helps a lot with that. But anyways, uh, that is it for the day, you know. Um, let me know what you think of the deck. I'd encourage you to try it out. If you're anything like me, you probably have, like, hundreds of wild cards for for commons and uncommon so you can put this to deck together fairly easily you know it's easy to get like a whole bunch of wins and it's super fun to play and just stack enchantments on things so anyways that's it for the day thanks for watching i'll see you next video